Elections in Pakistan are noisy and colourful. But this time, there's less fervour than usual. The vote is set to be one of the most tainted in the country's troubled history. Pakistan's most popular leader, Imran Khan, has been handed three jail sentences in the last week. His party, barred from big rallies, faces an intense crackdown by Pakistan's powerful military. With fresh tactics and new faces, they're fighting back. In the narrow streets of Lahore's old city, 17-year-old Ashal is taking a break from her A-levels. She's out campaigning on behalf of her mother, who's standing from behind bars. Just like her party's leader, Imran Khan, Alia Hamza is in jail on charges many see as politically motivated. After seeing my mom give, give nine months of her life dedicated for this cause, I thought it was important for me, for me and for my country's future to uh, step in and to fight for something that's for the greater good. Are you angry about what happened to her? After seeing the way she was dragged out of her house on the 9th of May, in front of my little sister, in front of my grandmother, it definitely set a fire in me. This was Alia Hamza last May, part of a huge crowd of furious Imran Khan supporters who took to the streets when he was first arrested. Some attacked military buildings in unprecedented scenes. Imran Khan had come to power promising social justice, but also with the support of the army. After falling out, they helped oust him. Now the two sides are bitter rivals. What you have to understand about Pakistan is it's being controlled either directly or indirectly by the military for nearly all of its existence. But analysts say the army is no longer interested in carrying out coups. Instead, it's manipulating elections from behind the scenes. Tactics include dubious legal cases, censoring journalists. The whole process has become known here as pre-poll rigging. At times, it takes the form of straightforward intimidation. This man, whose identity we're not revealing, was amongst thousands of Khan supporters hunted down by police following the unrest last year in what many see as vengeful political persecution. They told me to sign an official document promising I would have nothing to do with the PTI, that I wouldn't go to any rallies. I was a prey. I have small children. So I ask for forgiveness. Since then, I've just stayed home. What will you do on election day? I listen to what my heart says. That's the poor man's only weapon, the right to vote. One of the most damaging attacks on Imran Khan's PTI party is more subtle. Each party here has its own symbol. The PTI's has been removed from the ballot paper. Normally you would see on leaflets like this and on the ballot box, the cricket bat symbol, that's the PTI party's emblem. Instead, as you can see, there's a parachute and a laptop. PTI candidates have been forced to run as independents and barred from using the cricket bat. And that has a real impact in a country where many of the voters are illiterate. The lion symbol of Khan's rivals, the pro-business Pakistan Muslim League, is by contrast everywhere you look. Tell me, do you love me? If you love me, then I love you too. Its leader, three-time Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, looks set to be elected for a fourth term. He spent the last election in jail, convicted on corruption charges championed by Imran Khan. Now they've been overturned and there's little sympathy for the other side. Sharif has his own troubled history with the military. They helped oust him. Now they're helping bring him back. Senior members of his party are brimming with confidence. Imran Khan is in jail. The convictions seem politically motivated. Journalists are being told not to cover their rallies. 
they're not um, able to hold rallies in, in, in fact. Uh, I'm uh, less comfortable about uh, what we are hearing about uh, freedom of speech. Regarding Iran Khan's party, I think there's tremendous misunderstanding about what they did last year. And it was not politics, it was not democracy. It was practically an insurrection, a coup attempt. You're an experienced politician, you've played this game before and you know how it ends. That one day the military establishment helps bring you into power, the next day they're pushing you out. I mean, that's going to be your fate in a couple of years' yeah. time, isn't it? Well, that's what history says, but uh, if anyone can sort of maneuver Pakistan through this very difficult period, what is a difficult period? On one side, you could say there's sort of a dark abyss of uh, military authoritarianism. And the other side, there's this hell of Imrani fascism. We have to find our way towards the constitutionalism and the democracy. The democracy in Pakistan looks to be backsliding fast. Imran Khan's party aren't even allowed to hold rallies like this. Instead, they're using AI-generated deep fakes of their own leader to produce videos of messages written by Khan inside jail, a tool so many worry will undermine democracy used to promote it. The digital campaign, crucial for those unable to take to the streets. We're on our way to meet a member of Imran Khan's party who's standing in the elections, but the police are searching for him, trying to arrest him. So. He's been largely running his campaign online from secret locations. Zain Qureshi is taking part in a rally broadcast live on TikTok. By the time he joins, it's already had more than 3 million likes. This has been the hardest election campaign, in my opinion, in the history of Pakistan. Police accuse Qureshi of involvement in last year's unrest. Charges, he says, simply designed to keep him out of politics. I, I can meet individuals, but I can't hold rallies, I can't hold, which is a real infringement of my basic rights as a candidate. Uh, I should be, you know, we keep, we, we keep talking about a level playing field, uh, but there is no field. We're not even being given a field, leave it on it being leveled. Qureshi's campaign consists of viral videos many depicting a showdown between the shoe electoral symbol he was allocated and the lion symbol of his opponents. But despite the posturing, he's also able to strike a reflective tone. In the lead-up to the last set of elections in 2018, it was your party that was receiving support from the military. It was your opponents who were being jailed. You guys were, were kind of celebrating that fact. I am honestly of the view that we need to get out of this rut. I honestly feel that uh, democracy should prevail. I think PTI has definitely learned its lesson, and PTI, I think, does, want, does not want a handout from anyone. Uh, we have gone to the people. As a cricketer, Imran Khan would tell his team to play until the last ball. Pakistan's military denies interfering in politics, but it seems impossible to win without their support. In Lahore, Ishal is wrapping up her mother's election campaign. This is a deeply flawed democracy in a country in desperate need of politicians who can tackle poverty, improve basic services. But people here are also increasingly determined on deciding their own political future.